can't even take it too seriously anymore. Uh, wait a minute. Why is this thing on here? Oh, do I have the wrong thing on there? We can't, we can't even start See, the show. We yes, really Scott flustered. Left. Scott's just had enough. Bye, Scott. Somebody we check must on have Scott, really please. flustered you with the Kansas City Chief comments. No, but that why I wasn't flustered at all. Not at all. No, that's uh, why that big thing uh, was over your face, right? Hopefully, Chuck's or uh, Scott survives <laughs> this episode of Keystroke Medium. Welcome uh, to everybody in the live chat. Uh, Corey Gillum. <laughs> What's the first comment of the day? Surprisingly, uh, so he gets the Keystroke Medium Golf Club appreciation. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Corey. God, and let's, Scott let's is give crying a, about it. Let's give know, Scott Scott a, a real uh, tears so out of surreal. Corey. Good God, Keith was really close. Yeah, Keith he was him. super close, like he a minute him. off. Yeah. Very close. So we'll give uh, we'll give Keith like a a, a follow up, like a, a runners up. You get, oh you get oh yeah. One. There you go. This one. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Let's see. Who else is here? Oh, oh Rick's here. in the forest. Yes, yeah. and it slaps together. <laughs> uh, Patricia is here. Tom Hoddle's here. What's up? Uh, what is all this Kansas City Chiefs nonsense? See, I can't take you guys seriously at all. Who's Facebook user? I'm going to check that out. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by Plotter. If you didn't know, uh, we have an affiliate program with Plotter. So if you sign up for the free trial and um, pay for it, Keystroke Medium gets a little bit of a cut. Scott uses Plotter. I use Plotter. Uh, it's a phenomenal way to work out your ideas uh, on paper without actually writing the entire book i know a lot of you are like oh it's part of the process gardening blah 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 whatever uh plotting is I the way plotter. to go and uh if if you are a plotter or you're thinking about doing plotting uh we're talking about kicking or writing into high gear in 2022 uh i wholly recommend this program it's a uh web-based program so you don't need to uh worry about saving it, especially if you're on a if you're on a computer you, if you're on like a mobile device you have to uh, buy the app so it's actually two different purchases which is kind of weird uh, but it syncs from the app uh, to the um, computer the web based version and it's super easy like to Josh. use if you're yeah uh, otherwise you just have to walk Scott through it like five yeah. times uh, but it's super easy to use uh, we may end up doing a, a longer episode I know we've talked about it before we've even kind of gone through some things if you go back into the shows and uh, and look at some of the past shows we've talked about plotter a lot uh it, it's it's a highly effective tool uh and super easy to kind of just sit down and and work out uh but go as to much as you want to with it or as little as you want to with it and everybody's yeah. got their own way once i found my way uh, that was pretty streamlined due to my you know disabilities with technology <laughs> it uh is that like recognized smoking. by the uh, ada i'm pretty sure that there should be some accommodations for me someplace <laughs> i actually did an episode of the writer's journey where i uh, i talked about how i use plotter for uh, you know my little plot dot thing that i like to do oh, right and on. uh and i did a a template uh and i sent it to lauren i think it's still available if anybody wants to find that I oh, don't know. Check it out. It's uh, well, if you want to give it a try, you can click the link that I put in the, the chat there. It'll be in the show notes as well. Brought to you by Ken Brits. Thank you, Ken, for doing the show notes. Uh, click that link. Uh, you can try it free for, I think it's 30 days. And then if you end up buying it, uh, Keystroke gets a little bit of money to uh, help support the channel. Um, and it gives you a really good uh, product. We so. Get to, so and we get to support something that we actually believe in. So yes, 100%. something we actually That's, use. It's not very often you get to do something like that. So. That's the yep. truth. Anyway, that's, you don't have to make it complicated. Just find the stuff that works and then use that stuff. Right. That's, that's our. Uh, that's our. Keep it simple, stupid. We're gonna be uh, bringing simple, back uh, some our our show sponsorships uh, this next year, uh, next season. Uh, we haven't done a lot of them this season, but uh, I want to bring them back. I want to uh, start spotlighting some more books. I know Lauren and Kayleen are continuing to do that over there on their show, so we're gonna bring it back next year. We got to just like. Get back into it yeah. for 2020, 2022. The great thing about 2022 is it really can't get much worse. And I know we said that about- Dude, never- what, Yeah. What is wrong but, with you? So, so it's you like- Never say like that. When, no, no, no. It's like when you play the odds, right? Like we said in 2021, it couldn't be much worse than 2020. Well, I mean, okay. Admittedly, it was. But it couldn't get much worse than that, can it? The odds are it's got to flip. Oh, it can get direction. a lot worse. <laughs> It can get a lot worse. Zombies. I got some. Great I got some depression. Ideas. World War Two. 
You mean three? Uh, <laughs> you mean three? No, I'm, I'm oh, reminding you of how oh, bad it can get. Right, right, right. Past right. precedent. Yeah. Right. No, I get you. Yeah. There could be like a moratorium. Is that like the uh, <laughs> is that like the thing where you're like it's really quiet at night and you're like, guys, it's super quiet tonight. And everybody's like, no, you don't say that. No, never do that. Never. That's when all the crickets wake up. Oh yeah. See, Keith just said it in chat. Ch- it's it's quiet. This shift it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's when you send about four people home because you think you have too many, and then <laughs> uh, yeah. yep. whoopsies. Yep. We need all of you back, stat. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about what we've been up to this week. Uh, Scott, the Crypt Keeper, you go first. Uh, if you guys didn't see on his Facebook deal, he, he went over and, and visited the soon-to-be new Casa de Scott. I did. And it's so close to Casa de Josh that it's going to be so much fun. It is. Me. I might be able to throw – well, I probably can't quite throw rock that far, but I could probably lob I, a, I would say. Does this mean I have to talk my wife into moving to Kansas? Yes. Really? <laughs> You and it's that. it's really not that hard of a sell. We have lakes, and I have a boat. <laughs> and we got that, an amazing that would cost of be living. A big selling point for her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could get a triangulation to have like the Bermuda Triangle of riding power there. You know, there you go. Ooh, nice. Set up a yeah. studio. That's true. Yeah, around a table. Oh, we could get couches and like lounge back. Yeah, it'd be like, like the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. Kind of... yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be like the new Austin. Everybody's moving down there for artistic stuff. They all be in Wichita soon. That's right. True. Once they realize it's like not 400% humidity here, like it is there. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Keystroke Colony. There you go. Keystroke Colony Ooh, of Valor. I like, Valor. That. I like, I like that. that. Keystroke Colony of Valor. Weaponized Keystroke Colony of Valor. There you go. Write it down. <laughs> All right, Scott, what do you have to do this week, man? Um, <clears throat> let's see. So uh, we launched Reaper 12, Blood of the Reaper, to, uh, yesterday. That's good. And so I'm pretty excited about that. It's doing really well. It got a lot of good support. Um, working on the next Reaper book and also on finishing up Blue Sun Armada 3, which is basically done, but the, the pre-order isn't until February because I'm waiting on editors and stuff. Um Went back to work last week after having a really long time off. That was a really hard transition. I didn't get much done in the last week. I was, I was pretty bad. I felt like the crypt keeper or something kept in the crypt. I don't know, which I'm not sure what the correct term for that is. Some sort of zombie like, like entity. But uh, yeah, good. And we went and looked at the we looked at the lot. And we signed the contract of the house like two months ago, and they just now dug the hole because they're really behind. They're building a lot of houses in Kansas. Wow, they're building a lot. There were we were 150th in line when we signed our contract for to, the have our, to have our basement dug. Wow. And that's just in Wichita. And that's just through the people that they go through. To, I'm sure there's other people that are also doing basements and stuff. That so. really surprises me with the cost of construction materials that there's They're that building house like yeah. crazy. Our, our, our neighborhood, we live in kind of a new area that didn't get any growth. Like, cause we moved in here around 2011, 2012, kind of at the end of that real bad housing problem. And, Nobody built houses up here. And I was like, we're going to live on a, our own piece of land because nobody's going to build in this neighborhood. But over the last year, they've literally doubled the entire size of our neighborhood. You know, wood might be expensive, but apparently something is making everybody want to build a house around oh. here. Interesting. You know, I did not hire Ellen's contractor. I don't know who that is, but I definitely <laughs> would not use that person or that company after all the problems that she had. with. Don't her. ever do that. I'm having a delightful experience. I've <laughs> built, this is our second house we built and both of them have been just awesome great experiences so if you can convince your wife to put a bonus room under the garage for a ksm like office oh yeah maybe we could do it on the lanai yeah there you go there you go it's a thousand degree mild hour winds and it'd be perfect ah it'd be fine it'd be good so yeah no that's about it writing working um shuffling kids around doing that sort of stuff what about you chucky <clears throat> oh gosh, I don't know which one to say first, but I guess since my family might actually watch this one day, I'll go ahead and say that my oldest daughter last night welcomed my fifth grandchild into the world. Nice. Uh, Theodore Miller Hines, and we're going to call him Teddy. Um, mother and son doing fine. And on. Kind of that same note, Jack Dark 2 is finito, done. 
Rough nice. edit done. Sent off to Athon, and I'm about five, six thousand words into book three. So nice. That's give very a, cool. A clap for Papa Chuck in the chat <laughs> right now for finishing the book. He's been this is going to change nine. everything Poor about the intro show. <laughs> uh, first of all, what are you going to talk about now on your updates where you don't have this? But I'm trying to finish this. Now you're going to come up. I'm, with be, I'm trying to finish book three, man. I'm oh. <laughs> <laughs> moving no, right I, along uh, th things are you know well our whole topic today is about kind of reestablishing habits after the last chaos of the chaos of the last couple of years so True. uh that's yeah. what i'm going to be trying to do and talk about but uh yeah that's about it uh finish that book starting the next book had a grandkid and driving the daughter around to softball stuff so nice oh my son went to state competitions in uh, his theater group for something I don't even know, but uh, and he didn't do very well. But you know, the fact that he, he had fun, he had fun. So that's what. There you go. Just getting there is half the half the thing, though. Oh, I like what Lauren said. I'm trying to finish being awesome, but it never seems to stop. <laughs> it's an ongoing process. That's it. Lots of congratulations in the live chat for Pop Grandpa. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Keystroke. What is this? Keystroke side book four of the XI X Science series. X -Side series. <laughs> 100%. Uh, let's see. What have I been up to this week? <clears throat> so I had a really crazy week because uh, I had uh, kind of a breakthrough in the um, magic system for the fantasy uh, series that I'm I've been developing over the last couple of months. I kind of had a, a, a good uh, meeting with my uh, writers group and. Uh, we talked for uh, probably about 40 minutes trying to work out different aspects of what I was trying to do with the magic system. And uh, I think I got a little bit of it worked out. And like I told them, once I can figure out the magic system and how it works and how to make it physical, um, then the rest of the book is easy. The rest of the plot is simple. Like it's just making making those connections mentally with the, the the processes of how the magic works and how the world is affected by it and all that stuff. That's taken a little bit of work because I'm trying to do some, some things that are, are tropes, but that are also not, um, in new and exciting way, not specific, right. It, it, it changing some stuff up if, if that was the right term, if I'm allowed to do that. So, uh, I've been working that out. I actually woke up the other, the other morning at like one o'clock in the morning, wide awake, couldn't go back to sleep. Uh, I was like, screw it. Got up, came downstairs, made a pot of coffee and wrote till about, Oh, four 30, probably, uh, wrote about five, I think like 4,300 words was the total nice. uh, of words that I got. And I haven't got that many words in that, like that amount of words at one time and probably a year and a half, at least long time. And I was just, I was, and by the end of it, I was like, just kind of like this, like falling asleep at the chair. But uh, I was rocking the words there for a little while and uh, ma managed to get uh, two chapters and weaponized done. Uh, I got another chapter almost done in uh, Tranquility 3. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've been really kind of uh, pushing along and um, really thinking about a, a lot about the topic. Uh, that we're going to talk about today, really thinking hard about it. Um, just knowing, you know, and everybody knows kind of followed my, my full-time author journey from 2019 on and, and had kind of slid at the, the midpoint of 2019. And it just kind of gone downhill uh, since then from, for just life and other things. But I want to, I want to try to push back into it in 2022 and, and, and really make a big turnaround in my writing uh, career um and and so that's kind of what what pushed this this topic today uh because i want to have more days where i'm getting four thousand words a day because when i mean you guys everybody knows when you have those big days where you're talking about you know two thousand words three thousand words eat, well a thousand words if that's your thing you get those days and you can keep them up consistently then uh it's insane the amount of work that you can get done oh yeah I saw that uh, Brent Gatsky 
uh, posted on on our group the other day that he he managed to get a thousand words and and he's been doing that pretty consistently and I thought that was really cool yeah. and that's another reason why I was like let's let's look at because you know uh, Scott and I you've had this conversation a long time with me about where I was at and getting like you know three thousand four thousand five thousand words a day and now I'm struggling to get a thousand uh, fifteen hundred two thousand and uh, it's kind of like when you've been out of the gym for a really long time you want to uh, you want to go back in and bench 220, uh, 225, like at the first day back in, which I did bench press today and I did not do 225. <laughs> uh, but you, you, you've got to ease back into it. And so that's, but you almost never I mean. do. You go in there all fresh. You're like, I don't know why I'm not doing 10 sets. And then the right. next day, you're like, that's why you're like in a pretzel. <laughs> like, oh, I can't move my arms. I can't, I can't move my arms. Uh, so yeah, I'll, let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, oh, Walt's here. What's up, Walt? And somebody else finally caught the live. I think it was uh, Lou said he finally caught a live show. Welcome, welcome. There we go. Uh, I'd like to make a slight disclaimer so I don't anger all the Kansas City Chief fans is that I really only mm. am mocking Josh's mm. choice of decorations to antagonize my fellow writer, not because I have any angst against <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs or any other team. That's right. That's right. It's partly my fault because I commented that their logo oh god, we had to boot this out. Re resembles uh, a, a certain kind of adult entertainment device. And, uh, <laughs> yep, it, the literature backs that it up. Just it just sort of snowballed from it's there. Just, well, because really. Josh stepped away to make coffee, he shouldn't have left us alone together. <laughs> sure not have left us unsupervised. Out of hand. <laughs> you, need, you both need that shirt, and you're like, in, in my defense, I was left unsupervised. <laughs> exactly. yeah, exactly. but, um, there were no posted rules of any That's kind it. in our in our group office. Like my uh, wife yeah. doesn't want me to go to Costco unsupervised because it always goes badly. Mm -hmm. I can't go anywhere unsupervised. I I'll buy like eight hundred thousand rolls of toilet paper at Sam's. I'm like. Uh, it was necessary. Okay. That's it. It was there. It was it, it was on it. sale is the big one. That's it. I didn't well, need it, but it was a lot on of times sale. it's on sale, but is it really on sale? Like they just like like make up the price and then so it's like going to Kohl's. You guys ever been to Kohl's? Oh and you, yeah. And, yes. and you see the 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 price tag and it's slash and it's like half off. And I'm like, it's not really half off. They're not giving you a deal. The sale price is their actual price. Right. They're just writing that other price just to yeah. They just they just cut their they just there. cut their profit margin from a hundred percent to twenty percent or whatever. Right. No, right. they're doing that out of the goodness of their hearts. Yes. I mostly just try when I go into Kohl's not to get caught up in the midst of a shoplift that's gone bad, and I feel like yeah, I probably should do something. But yeah, no. My wife went shopping at Burlington Coat Factory the other day, and I'm like, "Don't ever do that again by yourself, please." Yeah, please. I don't know why. Anyway, okay, we're we're getting off topic. Let's uh, get back on. We so this. are because yeah. I can I can talk about multiple. All right, so every, all okay, long. starting with Josh. Uh, right. Name one specific daily writing habit that you want to uh, build in the coming year to reignite. Uh, I want to real. I want to, I honestly want to get back to being able to knock out because most of my writing time is in the morning. That's when I get all of my good work done. If it goes past noon, I'm probably not getting much writing done. That's when the kids are home. That's when I'm running yeah. back and forth and doing a whole bunch. So what I would like to do is, uh, in the, in the three hours that I have in the morning, and even I'm, I want to try to start to get up early because, uh, I remember getting up at five in the morning back when I worked full time, knocking out two hours of work and then at seven getting ready for work and going to work. And so I really want to start doing that again, getting up at five, getting a couple hours or at least an hour and a half done before the kids get up. Uh, or even if they're up, they watch TV or whatever, but getting up at five, getting a couple hours of work done, getting them ready for school, shipping them off to school, then coming back. Then I have a couple hours of either more writing or cleaning up what I'm doing and showing you know at least 2500 words in the in that time that is that are good solid words um and do that consistently every day and i i think i think it's like building that muscle i i'm not setting a goal to write 5000 words a day because i know that it's really hard for me to do that so i think setting a goal of 2500 and getting up at 5 uh and and pushing to get those words before lunchtime. Cause I know after lunchtime, it's all like, 
it's up in the air whether or not I'm going to be able to do that uh, to more writing. If I can get more words after lunch, bonus. Yeah. But I want to try to get all those words before lunch. And I'm going to start doing that uh, this week. Today was kind of a crapshoot. Tomorrow's kind of a crapshoot. But, uh, well, I'm not going to be able to do it Wednesday or Thursday either. So starting next week, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll be out of town uh, Wednesday and Thursday, I'm going to go up uh, work part time. Uh, so that my schedule is kind of thrown off a little bit there, but I'm, I'm going to starting, I'm going to try to start this week, but definitely next week starting to get those 2,500 word days and really putting a dent into the projects that I need to finish. Uh, so by the time I get to write the fantasy project, maybe I can have all these other projects wrapped up and done Mm -hmm. And then I can just sink all of my time and energy into that fantasy project because that's the one that I really want to write. Uh, and that's the one that I have the most fun writing. And one of the things that I found interesting about this week when I was writing my weaponized stuff is I had to force myself to keep um, not falling back into the uh, really relaxed kind of uh, eloquent prose that I was using in my fantasy stuff because I love that kind of like... I don't say slow paced writing, but it's a different pace, right? In between fantasy and, and mill sci-fi. And I really, oh, absolutely. That. Yeah. I really, really enjoy that. Really, it's not relaxed, but the different pacing of prose and narrative. Well, if you that look you at have the amount of white space genres. on a page, if you just look at the size of a paragraph in a fantasy book compared to the size of a paragraph mm-hmm. in a science fiction book, especially space opera or right. mill sci-fi, it's just, yeah, because I mean, you look. I was reading uh, Game of Thrones like for the fifth time a while back, and there's like pages that are almost the whole page is one paragraph. Right. That yeah. page is like nine hundred, or this paragraph is like nine hundred words. Right. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, it's just different the way they break things up. So yeah. Oh, and then the one thing I forgot to mention uh, before I wrap up my section here is that uh, I. I went through yesterday and today and kind of cleaned up a 10 page um, script that I uh, wrote for an opening scene of a, of a show slash movie or whatever that I've had an idea for, for a long time. And I got a couple people that are in the, I say in the industry, they, they write scripts and they do different things. I, I, I send it off to them to get some, some criticism and some feedback um, about that should have gone in my update, but I forgot that. So. It's relevant. Yeah. That's that, that basically. So that's my goal doing 2,500 words, getting up at five, smashing out the words. I'm also trying to get back in the gym too. So I'm starting that new year resolution early. For sure. Uh, Chucky, you've been, I mean, you've been hacking away at, at your books and, and uh, you, you're like me and in, in my boat where you've got a lot of a dad stuff going on that, that yeah. affects your day too. And um, so what are you, are you looking at anything specific? Coming up this year, yeah, mostly for me, it's just I want to get back to being consistent. Um, Yeah, you know, 2018, 2019, I I could count on at least a thousand words a day, at least six days a week. You know, and that was really no problem. Um, after 2020, um, you know, I guess with the pandemic and, you know, my attitude going to shit and struggling with all the kids and their stuff and everything. I just, I think I just kind of let the frustrations and the banality of day-to-day human existence sort of kill my, my motivation. And that's part, (laughs) and I'll I'll be honest, that's part of the reason it took so damn long to get Jack Dark 2 done. Right. Just because there were days I'd have an hour to write and I would just sit there like, oh, what's the fucking point? They're just going to come in there and, you know, you know, and it's kind of hard to get out of that mindset. Yeah. And um, I, I, this year I'm going to try really, really hard to uh, to just get back. I'm just going to say I, I want to average over the course of a month. Uh, a thousand words a day. So that means by the end of that month, I want to have at least 30,000 words done. I might do 100 words one day and 2,000 words the next day and 800 words the next day. Right. But instead of trying to say, okay, every single day you got to do this, I'm going to try and look at it as more of a monthly goal. If you keep a I even average. did a spreadsheet. I have a big spreadsheet, Scott. You'd be proud of me. Oh, I learned, nice. I learned to use Excel just for this, just so I could 
see keep how them, badly I'm succeeding or failing. So you keep Bro, the monthly I, average. Well, I'm so gonna restart. The daily average. So we've had a lot of people speaking of spreadsheets and daily word counts. We've had a lot of people that continue to use the Keystro Rimo sheets, even though I don't use it very often. Uh, and I mean, I, I just got a notification that that looks like Rick updated it just today. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. in there every day. And there's did you know, he just Nathan, break it like blow the did, did they run uh, out of numbers? Nathan's for, for in Rick? there, uh, putting numbers in. JR Hanley puts numbers in. Rick puts numbers in. Uh, so you know, in 2022, uh, we're gonna restart that. And uh, I mean, I want to start putting numbers in there. I need to remember to start putting numbers in there because uh, you know, I I I, I kind of go back and forth on whether or not to track word counts or track work. But when you track that word count and you can see what you've done and you know, you get the, it's like the, the like Scott, you have the, you don't want an empty box. You have right. like a year or two years worth of numbers in a box. You don't want that empty box. So you just keep it's, I think yeah. it was Jerry Seinfeld that wrote a joke a day for like a year yeah. or something to build that habit. He said, the story is Jerry Seinfeld, a young comedian asked him how to, how to get good at writing jokes. And he said, you get a calendar, a blank calendar and you write a joke every day or you work on your writing jokes every day and every day you do it, you put an X on the calendar. And after a while you get a string of X's and you don't want to break the, the you don't want to break the chain. Right. Uh, so seeing, seeing that on, on there is, is good, but like, kind of like Chuck is saying, I kind of fell away from trying to maintain really high numbers every day. I look for my monthly average, but I know that if I have four or five zeros, that's a lot harder to make up from than four or five, 200 word days. Right. right? You know, it just, it just, you dig yourself a pretty deep hole if you just, and plus to be honest, it's accountability. You know, it's, it's kind of like going to work when you have to face your, your peers and say, yeah, I just didn't fucking try today. 100%. You know, so it just depends. I think, I think uh, the biggest thing about writing books is that you can't do a book in one day. And unlike some people will have, well, some people can, I guess. I don't know if it's that good of a book, right? <laughs> but I've seen it done once or twice. <laughs> But, but the thing is, is it's like running a marathon. I mean, it's such a terrible or such a boring analogy, but really you cannot do it in one day. You have to spread it out. And so that's why consistency, I think is the most important thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my big thing. I just want to, basically I want to get back in the habit of trying to work at least a little bit every single day. I think while, while you guys were talking, it made me think a lot about, because I've struggled a lot this last I've had more zero days in the last probably two or three weeks than I have for like the last three years. And it's almost always due to just raw fatigue. And yeah. so like I'll work nights and if it's slow in the wintertime, I might have three hours where the radio is completely dead. I'm caught up on my work. I literally have nothing to do. I could totally write, but I just sit there and do nothing because I'm too tired. I physically feel like a wreck. Yeah. I watch YouTube videos or something stupid or just shoot the shit with people or whatever. But so I think that as part of this discussion on productivity for 2022, I think we need to talk about our just general health and what it takes to feel rested. Mm. I think that's one of the reasons I like, like Josh to write in the morning is because I'm usually got the best energy. I mean, I might wake up tired, but compared to trying to get energy later, right. It's just better you wear yourself out. Well, my wife wants me to wake up. She, my wife is a big, uh, uh, well, she, you could call her a gym rat, but she works out at home. So she likes, she gets up and she rides a Peloton and she does that almost every day. And, and she wants me to get up and work out with her and, and I'll get up and I'm really sluggish. And I'm like, this is my super good time to write like this. Uh, I can, I can work out at any time because it doesn't take any mental energy for me to do that. Right. And the mental energy that I have, I want to save for, the creative stuff, the stuff that I need my mental energy for. And uh, so I, I generally will wake up and, and come into the computer room and write. Yep. My, my best progress was 2019 and I was on the best schedule and I was like you, I, I got up and wrote for an hour and a half to two hours every day before work, but it was consistent yeah. and I made tons of progress that way. Do you have any, uh, I, and I know that you're kind of the, the probably the last person that it needs to redo what they're doing in their writing life to, to maximize 2022. But are, is there anything that you can think of specifically that maybe you want to do differently or change up or adjust going into the next year? Yeah. I, I, you know, the thing is I've, I've have, it's not a, 
productivity and stuff like that, it's not a constant. It's not like now I figured it out. It will always be right. easy because I've definitely fallen back from where I was before. And um, so I think, I think the most important step for me right now is to reassess, get back on a consistent plan like we talk about and really putting it first because I am really bad right now about um, checking my social media, checking my, my uh, raid shadow legends game, which is just, I, I need to, I need to cut, cut that thing loose. Right. But you know, I'll be like, well, I'll just do a couple of auto battles and then, and then I'll let that run while I write. And it's just so distracting. Yeah. Um, So I need to like games. It's that's a struggle because I I feel you, man. It is. I watched so tempting to go for that false sense of accomplishment that you get from those things. You know, I watched a really interesting thing on this topic and I can't remember the guy's name, but he's one of those YouTube motivational guys, but he talked about going on a dopamine detox, but his reasoning was a little bit different Mm -hmm. because he said, what happens is, is he's trying to teach himself to so that work gives him his dopamine fix. So work towards a worthy goal. So because he basically says it's too easy to get satisfaction by getting angry at Facebook. But if you got satisfaction from finishing a story and that was your only satisfaction or your main satisfaction, then you would be then you would be motivation would be much less of a problem. Yeah, I'm not. Really, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that whole dopamine detox but, idea. But the, but the point is, the point is, is writing your reward. Yeah, yeah, you discipline yourself to get your dopamine kick from thing from accomplishments, <clears throat> like you said, or you satisfaction, know. whatever you want to right. call it. But yeah, like I started writing because it was the most fun thing I did. Right. Right. So why did I let it not be the most fun thing I did? Why do I let other things, you know? Why am I cheating on my writing satisfaction with video game satisfaction and beer satisfaction and and uh, getting angry at politics satisfaction? I should get my satisfaction from the creative process, and then I could be like super powered towards reaching. Right, out. but again, you know, it's so like like you were just saying, it is so easy. Video games, getting worked up over things you have no control over. You know, yeah. these these are all easy, quick fixes for that dopamine rush you know getting likes Mm -hmm. on something whatever whereas that other one you got to put some work into it you got to write the book you got to paint the picture whatever it is you're doing and uh you know people are just kind of hardwired to do the easy thing as opposed to the difficult thing and that just comes down to self-discipline and that's that's a lot easier to say than to have but once i think but i think that it is self-discipline but i think once you cultivate the, the habits like we're talking about, it becomes less about self-discipline mm-hmm. and more about your go-to yeah. modality. Yeah. It's, it becomes your routine. Yeah. Walt, uh, Walt put in there, I get my biggest kicks from writing those scenes that set my blood on fire. I love that. I, uh, I love that. I love, I that, love live that, that live for that. Yeah. yeah. I love that live for that. There Absolutely. should be a comma in there. Absolutely. Walt. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I do the same thing. Like it's, it's interesting because you mentioned video games and, and, uh, I uh, I play a lot of Minecraft, probably too much Minecraft, and uh, I I had this realization the other day, and that's what kind of kickstarted this this thinking is that like you're saying, you play these games and you get this dopamine hit, and it's a little different than uh, writing, and it and it's and it's more immediate than writing. And uh, in Minecraft, if you've ever played it, uh, you're building things, and some of these things are complex, and they're they're big and it it takes you a long time to build them and so like i've been working on this one project for like say two weeks right and i know by the time i'm done with it i'm really gonna like it but it wasn't that i just finished it today and so i I made that connection to it's gonna take me a couple weeks to write this chapter it's gonna take me a couple weeks to write this book or or whatever it is and i i told myself well i'm an idiot because i've been putting off writing because i i I know that it's going to take forever and I'm, I'm, you know, scared or it's hard. whatever to do yeah. that. And I've got to grind, I'm, but I've been doing the same, the, the thing that I should be doing in my writing, I've been doing on, on Minecraft. And, and so that's why I'm trying to, 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 to make this shift so I can get all the work done that I need to do still allow my tell self some, some time to play the game without having it take over everything else that I'm doing uh, and shift that, that, um, enjoyment of of getting something accomplished shift that to the writing aspect and, of and why why is grinding in a video game is relaxing but grinding in real life is like the root of all evil and we should avoid it and give ourselves right. a break i think but, because you feel the consequences in real life you know that it yeah. matters you know right. deep yeah. down you know this matters and the other thing doesn't so who gives a shit you know well, almost that's what makes video, it easy 
Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I tell you, I got more satisfaction out of typing the end on Jack Dark Two. Yeah. Than I have ever gotten out of any Star Wars Old Republic quest or Elder Scrolls Online quest or whatever. Absolutely. Right, you know, and that and that's kind of what got me thinking on that because I have deleted all games except one off of my computer. So right, that and that game, I will let myself play it anytime after about six or seven at night after we've had dinner and everybody's kind of gone their separate ways, and I've done my writing for the day. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's it. That, it's kind of my reward for handling my business, you know. Patricia says she deleted all uh, her mobile games. It was surprisingly rough for the first few days. Definitely. Uh, but after that, it's like, it's like quitting anything that you've been doing for a long oh, yeah. time, yeah. especially yeah. something like that. It, that is having a negative uh, uh, aspect in your life instead of a positive. It, so it so here's a, a fun thing is a lot of those games, like I'll go back to raid because it's designed. It is a mass is a, it's a master class in marketing and fear of missing out and all of the marketing terms, because like they have right. daily login rewards and, you know, especially all events. the emotional manipulation and you have, but this thing is you have to play it every day or else you lose out on stuff. Well, when I was at right. 20, when I was at 20 books, I basically completely forgot about the game because I was talking to so many people and doing so much stuff and I didn't miss it at all. And I was yeah. like, and the world didn't end. I couldn't believe it. So, but how do we take that same level of, you know, engineering, if you will, behavior engineering they use in those video games and apply it to ourselves for the forces of good. That's what I'm looking for. Well, I think that, I think the key to that is, is you take a lesson from the, like you were just saying, there's a daily logins. If you log in every day, you get that little widget or whatever for mm -hmm. your, for your game. And I think you need, you need to have like a daily reward for getting some writing done. You know, you let yourself yeah, have uh, an extra cup of, booze or whatever at night you know whatever your your thing is right and i think if you can if you can train yourself to reward yourself that will make it a little bit easier to ignore you know maybe the game is the reward you yeah. know you say i'm gonna if, for every thousand words i write today i get half an hour of of raid legends whatever yeah. it was called you know something like that i mean that that's really the only way i can think of it Kids and that kind of search huh? dirty Dirty Tricks video game design. Uh, I can't even read today. Search Dirty Tricks, dirty tricks video, video game designers use. Oh, it is. I stopped at dirty. Sorry. 100, 100% <laughs> emotional manipulation, yeah. which is really, in my opinion, what all marketing technically is. Well, it's crazy really how it down. it's crazy how good they're they're uh, at. Do like just the the tone of a ding or the yeah. color of a flashing menu. Well, they put like, millions in research into this, yeah. in the in the, the neuroscience and the psychology and all this stuff of what makes people spend money and right. makes them happy and all that. And it's you know and that kind of interestingly enough segues into something else I wanted to try and and do this year, and that is sort of refocus on the whole business side of indie stuff because I got super frustrated and burned out trying to figure all that crap out over the last couple of years too, man. I just like doing marketing and stuff like that. Oh yeah. It's like trying to read ancient Greek. I mean, it's <laughs> fucking, I don't get it, well, but I, it's something I need to pay attention to, you know? And what well, that's interesting though, too, because I think, I think the biggest part of the whole marketing thing that we're all after, a lot of it is just sifting through the noise. Cause there's a lot of noise out there about marketing yeah, people who don't know what they're talking about becoming gurus. And it's, it's not that complicated, I think. Um, but people are looking for crazy, weird algorithm hacks and stuff like that. I'm like, that's not going to get anything done if you don't get your books written. Yeah. Well, see, but I have trouble with like the basic stuff. Okay. For instance, I had this conversation with Steve. I don't know if it was in Vegas <clears throat> or online or what, but we were talking about how you, you have to pay attention to the the um like what is selling well on the amazon screens but if you go to say the superhero genre and you want to see what the superhero books that are selling well what their covers look like and what their blurbs sound like and all that stuff you have to sift through tons of lit rpg and harem books and all this other stuff right I can't even pick out what is and isn't relevant. Which, which is which. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, 
I don't, well, and I don't, even if you do, there's so many people gaming the categories that it's really hard to tell, right? Like yeah, and the, they bleed over too. Yeah, because you can go into Steampunk and find a mech book. Right. Uh, so it's, it's like really that. tough. Yeah. Well, uh, George R. R. Martin was the like the number three science fiction writer for a long time back when they had that list before they got rid of the top 100 list yeah. that you could go look oh, at. Oh, when they had fantasy and sci-fi kind of... Well, no, points. in the subgenre of sci-fi because you had fantasy and sci-fi and he would be high on that. But if you went to like if you went to like uh, military science fiction, he would be number three. It has uh, absolutely nothing to do with military science fiction. Okay. But it's just so much sales momentum that he they either right. put him in for that category or he just bleeds over into it because he's so big at the time. Yeah. Trying to figure out that stuff. That's something else that I kind of want to. Yeah. I, I would like to have, on. I would like to have marketing and just business stuff in my daily routine. I think that's important, but I don't know how much it should be. I mean, I've, I've tried for like 30 minutes a day or 50 minutes a day. What do you guys think is a, is a good ratio of businessy stuff to writing stuff? Well, I think well it depends. Yeah, ahead, it's tough Joe, to say because I think it depends on how much time you have to devote to the whole process. You know, like if you got six hours a day and you go four and two, then that seems you probably kick ass. Yeah. But also another thing on- is you got to have some money to throw at this marketing stuff. That is but, 100%. But, yeah, and I looked at that too. So when I don't have money, what I do is study it. And well, I but money, I think too I that, it that there's marketing. a lot of marketing that you can do. Uh, that's not actually spending money on ads. There's, there's, I think that one of the things that I want to look into going into the next year is one of the things that, uh, uh, that Gary V talks about a lot. He's talked about it for years and years is using social media as a platform, uh, but not for selling your books for selling you. Uh, and then when you're selling, Ain't nobody you, buying sells, this man. Well, what I'm saying is, is you can instead of saying like because I don't look anything that pops up says buy my book I don't buy, right? But if, if somebody's if somebody's doing something interesting or like uh, um, Tyler Davis and uh, Blake uh, Peel both have TikToks and they're really funny TikTok accounts and I follow them uh, and through them I found some other authors that I follow on TikTok. Uh, and send so send me some links because I'm having a hard time finding authors on okay, TikTok I'll send you some. that aren't it, like 12 years old. And right, you know. <laughs> well, but it's interesting, like using the different channels in a, in a way that you wouldn't think would generate. Well, and uh, I, I, I think that the danger there lies in is that you want them to know you, right? You don't want to say buy my book, but you want to, them to know you as a writer. Well, if they, if they don't know you as a writer, they're not going to buy your books. No, they're that's true. But if you're gaining it, 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 and when I, and this goes to the, the building audience of marketing and not just like Mark, if you're building an audience and bringing people into your audience through like a TikTok or through an Instagram or whatever it is, then that's, that's also marketing. Uh, it's not just buying ads and, and, and right. selling them. And so right. like, like when you mentioned having the money to do it, you can do it for free if you have like other things that you're trying to bring into your funnel instead of just the ads. And that's one of the things I want to look at is, is doing that kind of thing. Yeah. And I, yeah, I think you can work on all those things without spending, spend a lot of money and just, there's, there's a lot, there's always something you can do, even if it's not necessarily throwing around a bunch of money, I think that just, or, or not even necessarily just for, um, for marketing, you might do other business things that benefit, your writing career, like clean up your accounting, um, you know, get an right. LLC, get it, get a, get an LLC and file as an escort if you're making enough money and a bunch of things like that that are also very important to your writer career besides just the writing, as long as you're still doing the creative stuff first. Like one of the things that uh, Walt says is uh, the, one of the things that really sucks is that marketing companies that are out there don't treat, treat you like you want to be treated even if you're willing to pay which is true and also as a caveat to that or as an add-on to that you know you talk about spending money on ads and <clears throat> you're like fifty dollars is a lot of money for me to spend on ads and there's yep. companies out there spending thousands of dollars on right ads. there's companies you know, out there with deep pockets that just blow us out of the water it's trying to compete on a level where you're not even in the same league it's right. like playing high school basketball in the nba right like it's and it's yep. not it's not exactly that but th- that's what i'm trying to like there are people that spend thirty thousand dollars a month on ads. 
Yeah. yeah. And I mean, how do you compete against that? And, yeah. and Rick has a you point can't go head to head with it. TikTok and Instagram are good for certain genres. Yes and no. But if you're not doing the genre, if you're just doing you, it doesn't matter what genre you're in. If you're using what, those what, for you. what, uh, what are those genres that TikTok I, and IG are good for? Well, I've seen IG in a lot of romance uh, yeah. categories, uh, in, kind of in TikTok too. But again, it's following the author, not the genre. Uh, right. World is talking about BookTube and BookTok, and those are are really good things. And those are are good platforms for readers. Uh, I mean, there are there are BookTubers out there that have you know half a million uh, uh, viewers. Kind of like that guy I've brought up a long time ago. His name is Daniel Green. He's a YouTuber. He's a booktuber. And he, well, he's he's kind of more than a booktuber. He's a he's a a platform for fiction. Uh, and he wrote a book. And I mean, the book did fairly well financially speaking. But only after I mean, he he but did a whole bunch. For of somebody stuff. who has like three million followers, you think it would have done a lot better? True, but that he was doing all the other stuff not to become an author. He just did all the other stuff on top sure. of it. So he wasn't out. And I mean, he, he, you know what I mean? Like he was, yeah. he was doing all that other stuff anyway. Um, right. Because he loved it. And that's a big thing is that the passion has to go in there into it. Patricia says something I like about Gary V is he uh, kind of chronicles what he's already been doing. Uh, there's a geniusness and an honesty to that. And some uh, just takes time to build. She's absolutely right. Uh, you know, he jumped on TikTok right at the beginning and TikTok is really turning into a big marketing platform. If you can, if you know how to work it correctly. He was talking about. Is it wrong? I don't know TikTok. who that is. Gary, Gary, uh, look up Gary V. Gary uh, Vaynerchuk. Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk. He owns uh, Vayner Media. He does a podcast. The crazy thing about Gary V is he gives all of his advice away for free. Um, and it's, it's really, if you actually use it, you'll do very well. But like he says in almost every talk he gives only like 10% of the people that listen to his stuff actually use it. Yeah. I'll have um, to check him out. Gary V. But he's super intelligent, especially when it comes to like modern business marketing practices, super intelligent. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kit says six figure author channel, recent episode on the writers, uh, romance writers conference. Many spend 20,000 a day on ads. Uh, you get better returns the more you spend. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that spend a lot of money on ads. Uh, but there are people that, you know, they spend $150,000 a year on, on marketing and make 200,000. Yeah. So like it, you've got to really look at things like that. If you can, you know, right. I had, I have some kind of, so I ran into some information about some, big name authors in the sci-fi genre from a couple of years ago that had basically bankrupted themselves with ads. Yeah. yeah um, I and, think I could totally see that happening. Yeah. yeah. Beca- and I think the problem is, is that ads are not enough by themselves. So if you stop producing as fast, but you keep throwing the same amount of money at it, it'll ride that for a while. Right. But the ads are just keeping it alive. They're not going right. to, they're not going to, they're not going to make your book sell like it was brand new. Yeah. Unless you're exactly. like truly a marketing genius, which I'm not sure that would be the or you have a massive fan base i mean right you know if you spend that like harry potter books are always in the top 100 on amazon always just because they're so massive it's like a self they have they have a thing called cumulative advantage which basically means they they got enough momentum that they will always get right more successful yeah uh and that's the the other thing too is comparing yourself to people that are in your league uh, so don't don't compare yourself to J.K. Rowling or Stephen King. Yeah, uh, and don't try to compete against them on ads. I would say don't game. compare yourself to anybody. Well, uh, I think you're always going to do it subconsciously, even if if you're doing it at all. Like I, I don't compare myself negatively to other people, but I look at you know uh, how am to, I doing, like relatively speaking, right? Like right. am I am I having relative success? Who's my peer to, group right now? Right. Yeah. Who's my peer group? You know, what's the thing? You are you're the sum of the last five books you read and the five people you spend the most time with. Right. It's one of those those type of things can be taken in a positive way. So, um, kind of you're shifting back gears to set, setting up our routines. Yeah, um, we I think that we should spend some time on marketing and business stuff, but obviously not a lot because nobody probably in this group that we're talking here among friends has the kind of financial horsepower to go head to head with the big dogs. No. But you should still be at least knowing about marketing and doing some, so it should be part of your routine, I believe. But uh, we started out talking about our routines and how to get the writing done and how to enjoy it, um, 
how to stay in touch with people. I think that's going to be one of the biggest things about my new process going forward is this year at 20 books, I really realized how isolated I kind of draw myself in. And I, I tried to make some commitments to be um, basically a better writing friend to other people. Uh, I tried to, I tried to make uh, one of the writing groups we go to Josh and I go to, I try to go to that. Although I, of course the first day I had to work all night, I missed it, but um I, I took on a mentor just kind of happened and that seems to be very fulfilling. I'm enjoying that. I mean, I'm mentoring somebody. I've never been the mentor very often. Um, so you're the mentor, not the mentee. Yeah. Are and I kind of have online but, groups that you guys are in. We, well, our, the one group that we are both in is, is, uh, and it's an online, uh, group. We have a Slack channel and, uh, we meet once a week and, uh, we, the meetings tend to run long. Um, it can be all afternoon. That's why I usually miss them. Yeah. Uh, only because there's, once you get done with our, our updates, then like last week we spent like 20 minutes help. Like I was talking with them and they were helping me work through an issue that I was trying to solve in one of my uh, books. So it's, it's helpful. But the other thing, like Scott is saying, like not everything has to be dedicated to producing words if you're if you're engaging with other authors and you're, you're yeah. like that in and of itself is reinvigorating like going to it's three books is always reinvigorating it's 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 re-inspiring it's doing that stuff and then when you're chatting with like i say people in your level uh because you could have the talk with david weber but he's not there like not everything not, he's going to say is going to apply to you you can't right. just do what he does and be successful you should obviously know that and because they say study people are successful but you right. have to know it's not a one-to-one -one exchange of tactics 100 percent. right hmm. yeah the whole connecting with people thing is something else that i probably need to work on this year because like this is pretty much all the writer exposure i get on a week-to-week -week basis and that was and you know going to vegas this year was such a breath of fresh air being able to actually sit down and talk to you know even uh, people i didn't i mean meeting you guys was great and all but just meeting other writers that i'd never spoken to before was I, that never happens to me i never yeah. get to talk writing with anybody with you guys so maybe i need to start trying to find peer yeah. groups like you're but talking about let's put one together like like uh james s aaron put ours together and uh i think it's it started with a base of five and I think we have eight now. So do y'all like have a weekly meeting or something or? Yep. Every week at the same time we meet. I have a and, monthly uh, meeting. Yeah. Scott has a monthly meeting. Um, but yeah, every, every week at the same time we meet Wednesdays at 2 PM is our, is our meeting. And uh, everybody, we go through, everybody gives their kind of updates, kind of like we do at the beginning of the show. Yeah. Um, and we give our updates and then sometimes we'll go on really long tangents about different things. Um, but I mean, a lot of the times, like somebody will have a, um, uh, a problem they're running into in their books or, uh, they, they need some, you know, thoughts on a title or whatever it is. And, and a lot of times we can work that stuff out right there on our, on our meeting. And it's just like, we meet in zoom, but you can do it. I mean, hell you could do it anywhere really that has a, a conference feature like like this uh and it's i mean i would i would recommend not going over eight people nine people because it once you have that many people start giving updates and you know say it takes 20 minutes to do an update sometimes and you're you're looking at easily an hour and a half for everyone just to give their updates and it always goes long because like we always break we always into like a chattering. conversation about something yeah yeah and i yeah, I mean, this is, and I think this is really important. It's part, definitely something I want to improve upon as long as the writing comes first. Now, that's kind of what knocked me out of my productivity for the last couple of months because I was trying to do all the things. Right. Um, and when, for me, knowing that 90% of my success comes from just writing, that I get pretty mercenary about it. If I get down to where I'm behind on my words and I have to miss the Slack meeting, or I have to sleep so that I can write later because yeah. I need the energy. I mean, it, I, that's always, except for like obvious family requirements and having a job. Um, if it push comes to shove, writing words always comes first for me. Yeah. Just because it has to, because well, I think, mo I think most serious writers are going to understand that too, though. Yeah. 
And, I, you know, like I said, motivations are all different. I'm trying to like make a major change in my life that relies on a certain level of writing output. Yeah. yeah. And I've been doing that for a long time and I feel like I made success. Um, Jeff Haskell put something in Facebook um, and there was a screenwriter who did a little YouTube and I watched it. It was pretty interesting, but he was basically talking about that, that talent is important, but execution and, and hard work and being able to put it in there is really important too. And he's like, he said he was in LA and he says, there are a lot of talented people here, but that doesn't mean anything. Right. What it means is whether you, you don't put execute. in the work. Uh, yeah. can't execute it. Your talent doesn't mean anything. Exactly. Well, I mean, this show came from Scott and I meeting every month to talk about writing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's this has become our extended writing. So Scott and I are actually in two writing groups. I actually want to think about it because the K KSM is really our first KSM writing group. Writing group. Yeah. Our, our first. Uh, one. And that's 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 what the, this show uh, came from was uh, we used to meet every week and talk about writing. Yeah. And uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I always just tell my wife, I'm going to go have my writer meeting now. And she's like, you're going to go have coffee with Scott at Barnes and Noble. You're not having a writer's meeting. I'm like, yes, we are talking yes, about what do you know about writer's meetings? <laughs> I don't know nothing. That obviously helps every argument. If you, if of you course, it that way. you turn it around that way. It always helps. Yeah. <laughs> Walt says nightmare ice cream is a group of RPG and novel writers who get together uh, once a month to eat ice cream and slam each other's stuff to make it better. <laughs> yes. 100%. Well, and that's something we don't do in our writing groups that I wish we, we had uh, time to do is, is uh, look at writing like, like take samples from other people's writing. And, and we could give probably do that if we talked about politics, some other bullshit less. To be yeah, honest. that is true. But it also, if you're, you're looking at, you know, eight people and eight people write 2000 words, that's, you know, 16,000 yeah, words that, that you have to read a week. And then it, it you gets need one person of, a week that gets the critique. <coughs> yeah. That's we don't talk about commitment. the We don't talk about the first rule of writers meetings, Patricia. We don't, we don't talk about that. Yeah. My first rule is going to be no religion, no politics. Yeah. I've lived by that rule for a long time. We usually, <laughs> we, we usually get through a meeting without that. Well, KSM, we don't have any of that. But on our other one, we usually get through the majority of our meetings without. But sometimes they do kind of divulge. And, and There's uh, been one or two times where I almost left because I couldn't yeah. take it. Uh, so anyway, I, I think, uh, again, going into 2022, I really want to make a concerted effort to like really get back into being consistent about the words and, and getting those words down. Uh, I'm going to be uh, back in the Keystro Rymo sheet. Uh, we're going to have a new one up for 2022. Uh, if you're interested in uh, getting into uh, that sheet coming into the next year, if you're, if you're already on it, everything should, should transfer to the new sheet. I think, um, uh, I think I'd, that's I'd be curious to know year. if, if we want to do a, a purge of it, if people are serious about being in it, Oh yeah. If they should like put their name in the yes, they want to still be. I don't know. I'm just thinking. No, that'd probably be good because I think we have a, a whole bunch of people that don't that don't use it. So because it's probably about probably ten or fifteen percent of the people in that sheet post anything on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll do a new one. I'll do a brand new one, and then uh, I'll make a post. Uh, matter of fact, right after this show is over, I'll make a post in the group about the new sheet, uh, and that way we can all kind of get a head start on. Uh, uh, 2022 uh Rimo. uh if you're interested in that kind of thing if it's motivating for you to track your words this is not a competition like uh you're not uh you're not trying to beat anybody we do have a leaderboard uh we do have a total so let's see if i don't know that there's a uh there is a yearly so 2021 oh that's just for two months i didn't do it for the whole year uh i'll have to go back and do it for the whole year because uh Right now, Rick Bartlow is in the lead for December. Shocking. But so, but it is, I mean, like I said, um, take this for what it is, but if you look at the two most consistent high out, output people in the list, it's Rick and Nathan. Yeah. And guess who has way more books than all the rest of us? Probably. Rick and Nathan. Yeah, Rick exactly. Nathan. Right. And yeah. I also, I also know. I said. Yeah. Nathan, I said, yeah. I haven't talked to him in a while. He has, he didn't update. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he did. It. And right now he's at 13,000 words for yeah, So December. let's look at November, November totals. November total, Nathan had 68, Rick had 73, and this thousand. Rick had 73,000, Nathan had 68,000, Scott had 63,000. But then, I mean, you have a lot of other people that are putting, you know, uh, 4,700, 2,100, 
7,000, 30,000. They're putting in some words when they can, right? Yeah. Sure. And, and that's not a thing. It's, it's not a, uh, not a competition, uh, it, but it is like you say, accountability. But if you're looking at us for a study in success, you can go down, like go down, you can go down Rick's list and just look at how consistent his word counts are. I mean, he's just right. a machine. Oh, Patricia says she was doing good until she got uh, distracted by a good script project. Since it's Ooh. a new format to me, Ooh. I wasn't focused on. That's really cool. Oh, I mean, uh, that is least, very cool. I, it's so I saw. I mentioned earlier that I I, I <clears throat> tweaked this script that I was uh, sending. It's a it's basically a ten page opening sequence for a uh, either a TV show or a movie. Doesn't matter. Uh, and she's right. It's such a different format in writing and it a different way of writing. That it was almost, I had to stop working on it because I needed to do actual words on projects that I'm actually being paid for <laughs> because it was so fun just to kind of click through. And but you did, you, did you do anything to prepare for that, like read some scripts or anything like that? I've read a couple of scripts. I've had a couple of people send me, like I got the uh, the Tenant script, I got the Dune script, I got uh, a whole bunch of scripts that I've seen um, right. the movie of and I just read them. But a lot of the thing is sometimes you'll get like a, a shot script or a... Uh, like a uh, they they get they write a script. There's two script. You can go write a spec script or a shot script. And a shot right. script is how they're going to actually shoot the movie. Right. If you if you get a, a spec script, that's the one that you want to read because the the shot script is something completely different. Yeah. If you um, go, you can buy scripts sometimes in like the bookstore. I remember I used to do that. But I'd read a book that so those are careful. You have to be careful about those because that's not what a writer turns in. For a project that has some extra stuff in it that's not there was a website that i found i'll have to look and see if i can find it but there was a website i found that you could get scripts from a lot like i got uh uh a lot of aaron sorkin scripts i downloaded and read because he's a master at i'd like to see that website that'd be interesting i'll have to find it I'll from a, just a craft perspective right uh, but anyway, we'll get a list up uh we'll get a post in the keystroke channel uh facebook channel about um uh, Keystro Rymo 2022. Uh, and usually what I do is I just have people send me a, a PM, but put your name in that list. And then if I, if I don't get a PM from you, I can, I can shoot you a message to get you in there. Cause it, it's, it's a fairly easy deal, but I just don't like the link out to have some random person jump on. And well, cause you're going to get a lot of people that don't care and they're just in there to see what other people are doing. And we don't want that. This yeah. is, this is for our inner group. Uh, so I'll make a post about that. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, the project will come out about April next year. A really awesome group of people possibly might even have Kimmy Chan. Oh, nice. Very cool. Very cool. Nice. Very excited to see that. Uh, Tom says, I wrote Storming Armagosa as a screenplay just uh, to write one. Fun fact, montage, she montage scenes do not translate well into prose. <laughs> 100% true. <laughs> Uh, oh, hey, uh, Joaquin Oliveira is here. I haven't seen him hey, in a long up? time. What's up, dude? Been a long time since we've seen you on a live show. Welcome back. Yep. Uh, hey, we're going to get out of here today. It's been a, a, a great show. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Scott McGlasson is the, uh, should we give him like a golf clap for the last comment of the day? Thanks for showing right. up. The He's kind of like a tail gun, tail gun, char, tail gunner, Charlie. They just show up at the last, hey, show's over. Hey, guys, I'm here. Uh, hey, we're going to come back next week. We're going to talk about some reading. We're going to talk about some writing and, of course, everything in between right here on Keystroke Medium. Peace. Later, guys. Hasta.